Okay, I think we are live, although you guys are going to have to tell me if everything looks okay, if you can hear me, all of that good stuff. So I'm going to give it a moment, let you guys respond. And by the way, thanks for everybody who joined a little bit early. It's always fun to see the early risers. So uh, so be sure to let me know if you can if you can hear and see me. Good to see everybody. Okay, I haven't had confirmation yet. Can everybody see and hear me? Are we good? Is the microphone working? Okay, so yeah, all right, very very good. Thank you guys, I appreciate the confirmation. Um, so guys, uh, I, a couple of people were asking, you know, is it Wednesday night? Uh, where is everybody? Is everybody going solo? Well, um, yeah, a little bit. I, I think there's an opportunity for us to still do the Wednesday chats. I mean, we have so much fun with that. We have a great time together, the three of us, but we also have a great time with all of you. Uh, but this is an opportunity to just kind of hang out us, you know, and and talk about some maybe some different things. So, uh, so we'll do this periodically. I don't know how often I'll I'll do this. It won't be weekly. There's, there's just not enough time, but, uh, but as often as I can, maybe a couple times a month, something like that. So it doesn't get old. Um, I, I don't want anything to get stale. Now, um, I, there's no agenda for tonight. We could talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. And uh, we actually already had an early suggestion just a moment ago. Uh, uh, Carl Thornton was talking about the opinion of the uh, the Glock 48 and the Glock 43X. As you guys know, I'm a fan of Glock. I like Glocks quite a bit. Um, I've enjoyed them off and on for a lot of years. And so I'm excited. I'm excited anytime Glock comes out with something just to see what it is, just to uh, experience it. Um, not everything is uh, revolutionary or terrifically exciting necessarily, uh, but I just, I like to see the new things. And I'm very interested in the 43X, perhaps more than the 48. And that's mainly because I like single stack firearms. I'm a huge fan of the Shield and the PPSM2. But the 43, although I really liked it in the beginning, I sort of fell out of favor with it because I found some of the other ones to be a little bit more ergonomic, I had a little bit more grip on them. They were more pleasurable to shoot and I could shoot them better. So I'm excited to see if the uh, Glock 43X changes that opinion just a little bit. Um, the grip is not only longer and it's 10 rounds, but it's a little bit wider as well. And I think that's gonna make it a little bit more acceptable for people with bigger hands or just want a little bit more control over it. So I'm I'm really excited for that. Um, I like the slide, the look of the slide quite a bit. It's something different for Glock as well. I have no problem with black guns, uh, have quite a few of them, but, uh, but it's fun to kind of mix things up there as well and have a little bit more of almost a custom look right out of the box. So I'm excited for that. And then the 48, I have mixed feelings about the 48. I'm a big fan of the Glock 19. It's probably my favorite overall Glock. And so having something a little bit thinner, but otherwise the same footprint, I don't know yet. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. And I don't know exactly where it's going to fit for everybody unless they just are after a longer slide, a longer sight radius, that sort of thing. And so we'll, we'll just have to see how that goes. So, um, I, you know, I don't know. And uh, in all seriousness, was asking about the lackluster uh, 2019 SHOT Show. You know, I don't think it's as lackluster as perhaps last year um, with Glock coming out with both of those two that we just talked about, but then CZ, the new P10s. I'm a huge uh, P10 fan and I cannot wait uh, to really get my hands on the S and the F um, and the new uh, P10C as well. I had a little sneak peek uh, not too long ago and it was extraordinary. Um, so I'm very excited for that. Um, and then uh, the Mossberg, uh, the Mossberg I'm excited about that's on the list and I hope to see it very soon. I was actually kind of hoping it would come in today, but uh, um, hope, hopefully we'll uh, see that very soon. So I'm pretty excited for that stuff. Um, uh, James Massey is saying he thinks the Glock uh, 43X will be a big seller. I do too. Um, the 43 is one of their best sellers from what I understand. And so I think the 43X will definitely it will definitely do well. Now, there are going to be a lot of critics. There are going to be a lot of critics right off the bat that say, once again, Glock is doing the same thing they did with the other X, the 19X, and then the uh, the 45 after that, extending the grip, but not the slide. And a lot of people say, well, that's counterintuitive for carry. Maybe, maybe, but I also hold that a lot of people carry Glock 17s or full-size 1911s or uh, full-size Smith & Wessons or a variety of other firearms. And so the notion that that is counterintuitive, it probably is for some. And during the summer, 
for a t-shirt carry, we'll have to see how that goes. It might be a little bit too long, but uh, um, but it's thin, it's light, and uh, and if it's shootable, then it might be the way to go. And either way, they're gonna sell. Uh, Glock tends to sell, so um, I don't know. And a foo, a foo, good to see you, buddy. I was asking about a Chris Vector versus or a CZ Scorpion. I've reviewed the Scorpion, absolutely loved it. It is phenomenal. It's a great firearm, and at, at the cost. Uh, at the price that it is, I think it's a great buy. Um, I don't have as much experience with the Vector, although I have shot one in 9mm. A buddy of mine has a really cool white one. It's kind of like a, a, a Stormtrooper type of Vector. And uh, and I liked it okay. I didn't like the ergonomics on it as much. When I would put my hand on the front, um, right in front of the, uh, the magazine, um, uh, whatever, magazine well, whatever you want to call it, uh, I, I didn't necessarily care for the way it felt so much. And it was a little bit snappier than I expected it to be, especially considering the mechanism that uh, that drives the bolt down. And so it's supposed to, instead of bringing everything back at you, some of that force actually goes downward. Uh, so it, it's a very, very odd, interesting firearm. They look pretty freaking sweet, though. Um, and I didn't get to run one with a can, unfortunately, and that would have been very cool. So um, I may may try and do one again at another point in time, but uh, but we shall see. Um, yeah, Romans, I'm really looking forward to the P10S. Um, I really am in the P10F. And, and again, had a little sneak peek uh, not too long ago. And I had reservations about the F. Um, I typically don't like bigger full-size firearms as much as I do compact, subcompact, uh, single stack, that sort of thing. It's just uh, whatever, how my shooting technique uh, works with firearms. That, uh, that F is massive. That grip is extremely long but it felt like a P10 and I love the ergos of the P10. And so it actually, it shot better than I thought it would. So I'm really excited to actually get a full review and spend a lot more time, I only put a few rounds through it. So um, it was a very quick in and out um, and, and it didn't really get to fully formulate any sort of an opinion or anything like that. But uh, uh, but we shall see. Uh, Stacy Hall, yeah, I agree. The Smith & Wesson Shield, it, it's a phenomenal firearm. Uh, it's one of those guns that uh, that people just tend to fall in love with most of the time and have pretty good luck with. So um, I, I like them quite a bit. Uh, Pyro, uh, yeah, that Mossberg pistol. I'm really excited to get my hands on one. Um, I think that'll be a lot of fun uh, for sure. And <laughs> Mean Chain, it's not Wednesday, it's Tuesday. Do a little solo thing. Uh, we'll we'll do this periodically. I don't know how often we'll do it, but uh, uh, but just periodically. Claymore, good to see you as always. So. Uh, guys, what other questions do you have? Again, this is this is your night. Um, whatever you guys want to talk about, I'm happy to talk about whatever. Um, I spent a little bit of time. Yes, Rush 2112. It's very important. Um, <laughs> I spent a little time at the range last night, actually uh, uh, firing for the first time the AR pistol that I just built. Um, episode two is going to be coming out pretty soon, so I don't want to give away very much. Uh, episode two is going to be uh, concentrating pretty much on the build as it went together, and and all have a little bit of build footage in there as well. However, I have to be kind of careful with how I do that, but I did film some of it. So um, you definitely know it is me putting that thing together. Uh, and um, and I just, I will tell you it ran and um, it ran fine. And it's funny, um, I had a commenter on the first video um, who made a, a couple of comments. One about the dagger defense uh, sites, the optic, the iron sights and the uh, red dots saying, you know, they're, they're, they're cheap and they won't hold up and that sort of thing. You know. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about uh, budget optics, but I'm a really big fan. I'm a big fan for a couple of reasons. First, as long as they work, obviously that's the most important thing. They have to work, but it allows anybody to be able to get into an optic. Not everybody can afford a $500,000, $800,000 optic, especially when they may have just uh, purchased a firearm or built a firearm, whatever it is. I mean, everybody has some sort of budget, whatever it is. And um, so I love the idea of budget optics, allowing people the opportunity to have that same sensation and that uh, that same experience at the range or whatever it is without breaking the bank. And I will tell you, the optics worked flawlessly. So I was very impressed with that. But again, more on that at a later time. But uh, but I was I was uh, pretty excited to make some big noise at the range for the first time in a long time. So that was a lot of fun. Um, uh, sight mark, uh, red dots, pyro, you know, I've never tried. I don't know. Um, I, but I imagine, I mean, it's probably another, uh, another budget option. I imagine maybe if somebody else, uh, out there, some, some other friends and family has some, uh, uh, some options for that. But, uh, Frank Hillman, uh, $508,000 optics. There probably are some out there. I've, I've got a buddy at Centerfire who's big 
into rifles and, and uh, long shooting, long distance shooting, and he'll spend $2,500, $3,000 on an optic. Um, and again, not everybody can do that. I can't do that. Um, and so again, I love the opportunity and the option to get into something for significantly less than that as long as it works. I mean, obviously that's the uh, priority there. And then I did shoot the Walther uh, Q5 steel frame uh, last night. So I've, I've got some observations about that as well. That was an interesting experience. I actually, I have that guy uh, right here. Those of you who follow me on Instagram, you know that I picked this up and, uh, and I, I wasn't really planning on doing that originally, but, uh, but I just, it's sort of called to me a little bit and I really wanted to know how is it going to hold up against one of my very, very, very favorites, uh, the, uh, the shadow two. So I'm, I'm excited to review this guy and then also put those two head to head. I think that'll be a very interesting if I could only have one. So we'll see what happens, but that steel frame is a hoss. Um, it, it really is. It's quite huge. So, uh, Claymore is saying, I'm excited about the P320 X compact. Uh, we'll just get a grip module for my X carry though. So, um, so you've got a P320, a regular one, not an RX or anything like that. And you'll do the X frame with it. Am, am I understanding that correctly? Um, I mean, you can definitely do that and that would certainly change the ergos quite a bit. I like those X frames. They're nice. Um, I enjoyed the X series a little bit more than the standard P320 series, although all of them, uh, work quite well. So tactical pontoon. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Got some stuff coming up for you and we need to talk guns later at your convenience. Steven, good to see you as always. Of course, Paul Wright is asking about the, uh, the Glock 46 and the Glock 47. Now, um, I think the Glock 47, didn't we decide that which one was it? Um, there, there were several different, maybe it was the 44s, the Glock 19 X, I think something like that. So the 47, I'm not a hundred percent sure, except that might be the 43 X perhaps is actually the 47. The 46 is the rotary barrel, uh, Glock. It's only in, I think Europe right now. I don't know that it's going to make import standards. So I don't know if it's going to come to the U S or not. Um, we'll just have to see. That'd be pretty freaking sweet to try though. Um, but, uh, but we shall see on that. <laughs> mill spec guy good to see you good to see you uh let's see romans let's see uh, i serve in dod and glock failed the test by not getting the contract uh glock uh, glock's work no doubt uh, but then they put it on the civilian market personally i would go with the smith and west mmp 2.0 i love the lcp custom i've never seen an lcp custom uh before but smith and wesson i'll tell you what those those 2.0s especially with an apex trigger they are nail drivers they really are um, they're fantastic shooters now a lot of people don't like the extra aggressive grip quite as much for carry but uh, but i'm i'm a big fan of the smith and wesson i'm i'm a fan of clocks too uh for Frank, Frank, was it you that was saying in a comment the other day that I'm nice to everything, even when I don't necessarily care for a gun as much? You guys may have seen that Taurus uh, TH9C video uh, that I put out very recently. And I like the gun okay. I really do. It's not a bad gun. And if somebody handed it to me and said, this is what you've got, you need to work with it, I would do it. And, and that would be fine because it ran. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. It has to run, right? Uh, but uh, but there were a couple things I just didn't care for as much, which which was a little little bit of a letdown because that G2C is a fantastic gun. Um, it really is budget option wise. Um, it is, it is, it is a really good gun. So the TH9, maybe not so much, but I want to spend some more time with it. Uh, my opinion may change. Who knows? We'll, we'll see. Oftentimes on those uh, first release videos, I only put 250 or maybe 300 rounds through a gun before I make the first video. And that's enough for me to start formulating an opinion about how it shoots, how I react to the gun and, and, and all of that sort of thing. Um, it's by no means a long-term study. I, I can't do that um, right now. The, the budget doesn't allow for that necessarily. And then also my, my channel, our channel is not at a place where I can release a gun a year after it comes out or six months after it comes out. It just, by that time, people don't really want to see it so much. So I have to be a little bit more aware of timing as much as I can. So um, that's kind of why I do things. But, uh, but again, we'll, we'll just have to kind of see how that goes. 
Uh, Keenan is saying, love to see a VP9 with a longer slide. A surprised uh, HK never made one. Well, you know, you can do that VP9 with the uh, with the muzzle extension, that weight uh, that goes on it. I think you can get it at, at hkparts.net or whatever it is. I know Honest Outlaw did that with his P30 long slide. So that gets a kind of that John Wick sort of look and it adds a little bit of length and it adds a little bit of weight uh, to the front as well. I imagine it would make the VP9 uh, an incredibly soft shooter. So it might be something to consider. It would give you that option without uh, without having to wait for them to come out with a longer slide, which they may never do. Who knows? Who knows? But they have VP9s, man. I'll tell you what, they're great guns. And I'm, I'm bummed that I don't have the SK anymore. It's a review channel. I can't keep everything that I have. In fact, um, I, I've got a gun on the list right now that has to go that really breaks my heart. But uh, that's kind of how how things have to run around here. And the SK was a, a real bummer. I hope to walk into one of those again at some point down the road. Uh, we shall see about that. Uh, C. Kim, uh, CX4 Storm, a market uh, ready now that 9mm carbines or carbines are warming up. Yeah, probably. Um, I hear nothing but good things about the CX Storm. I've never tried one. I've never shot one. But people over and over again say they're fantastic guns. And you're exactly right. I think nine millimeter carbines are becoming more posh these days. Um, and, and that's something I definitely wanna do a nine millimeter AR this year. That is on the list. Um, that's something I'm gonna have to part out, I think. So uh, so I've got some investigation to do, but I would love to try that. I'm a big fan of nine millimeters, you guys know. And in an AR platform, I, I just think that would be really cool. And the Scorpion was so much fun. I think an AR version of that would be would be pretty cool. So, uh, but I, I totally agree. I think uh, that's becoming more and more popular. Uh, let's see, Pat uh, 8473 saying MP 2.0 needs to come out with an optic ready uh, gun stock. You know, they have the core um, and I think they have, I think they also have a custom shop uh, MMP 2.0. That's got an optic on it. Um, they're older. They're the older versions, but, uh, but there, there are optic MMPs, uh, just not the 2.0. Uh, but I think they'll do that. I mean, everybody is really going to red optics or red optics, optics. Uh, they're going to optics ready guns. And so I think that's going to happen. Um, a, a lot of manufacturers don't like to release everything at once because then you'll buy, you know, the, the coolest one for you, whatever it happens to be. Oftentimes it might be the optic ready one. And so, they do things in uh, in waves. Uh, so you buy the first one, you get excited about that, and then they come out with the next one six months or a year later, and then you want to buy that as well. So uh, that's that's how they do it. It's it's evil without question, but uh, but I think that's how they sell more firearms. So uh, <clears throat> uh, shooter industries, good to see you. Saying you probably need to get a Gen two P O nine uh, mags work in the uh, P ten F. Yeah, and I mean the P10F, it's huge. And um, I, I got to play around with it with a couple of different uh, base plate options uh, that were out there. So uh, so you can you can throw in, I don't know, it was 19, 20 rounds, something like that. I mean, that, that was pretty impressive uh, for sure. Frank is saying, Kentucky Gun Company did a tabletop and range review of a production Mossberg. I saw that video, yeah. Um, trigger seems real nice. Yeah, um, you know, it's the flat trigger. The one thing they were saying is it's a little heavier. They were saying somewhere around six pounds or six and a half or something like that. I'd be surprised if it was that heavy. Um, and I'm hoping that is not the case because to me, I, the Goldilocks zone of a striker fire trigger, in my opinion, is somewhere between like, four and five and a half, something like that. Um, and, and reasonably crisp, reasonably smooth, that sort of thing. Everybody's got different tastes on that, but that's kind of the Goldilocks uh, for me. Mean Gene, uh, has anyone seen the Zev gun? I saw that video. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I imagine that's going to be a $2,000 gun. Zev uh, Glocks are extremely expensive. Uh, they're proud of their stuff and they're, it's it's good quality stuff, but I, I you know, it's tough to justify that kind of price. You know, if enough people are, are giving trouble for something like this, the Archon Type B, which by the way, this is becoming one of my favorite guns, guys, just so you know. I I complained about the the back little beaver tail right here. It kind of pokes into you a little bit. And I was talking with, um, uh, with Sarge, uh, one of the marketing guys at Archon. He actually reached out to me and thanked me for the video. That was very nice of him to do. Um, I, I, I hadn't expected something like that, but I told him that I had actually taken a Dremel and I dremeled down just a little bit of this one edge, only on one side, because I wanted to smooth it out a little bit. And that did exactly 
what I needed it to do. And now it is it is just uber comfortable. It's great. And he's told me that other people have taken quite a bit more of that beaver tail off. So it's whatever works best for your hand. And thankfully, that's polymer. Um, again, I've got some thoughts about this steel frame Q5 match. Uh, that has a similar situation, and uh, and and unfortunately, it's steel, so you can't really take a Dremel to it quite as easily. But uh, but more on that uh, when the video comes out. So, uh, uh, Killer Collier Coiler, sorry, uh, Kimber nine hundred dollar Eco SP. What are your thoughts? I have never touched a Kimber before, um, other than you know picking one up at a store. I've never shot one. I have no experience with Kimber whatsoever, so I don't know. Um, Kimber. I've always heard mixed things about. Some people swear by their 1911s, and there's some of their 1911s look freaking awesome. Those Raptors, I think those Raptors are great looking guns, um, like the Micro, maybe something like that. Uh, but I've also had people say that like their Solo, I think it was the Kimber Solo, there were lots of problems with that. And, and so I, I've just kind of stayed away from Kimber. At some point in time, I'm sure I will visit one. I'd be curious to know what they're all about and, and learn a little bit more about them. But I, I just, I don't have much of an opinion. And Insight Freedom is saying that the Zev 1911 is over $4,000. Well, that's nuts. Um, I, I mean, and that's a nine. I didn't know Zev made a 1911, uh, but that's uh, that's crazy. So, so what would you ballpark the uh, polymer at then? I mean, I again would say probably two thousand, I maybe twenty five hundred. I don't know. I, I mean, it'll be really interesting uh, to see uh, what that's all about. Seven Wonders is asking uh, the new Sig P two thirty eight Legion. Has anybody tried that? Um, I have not. Um, I, I've done the 238 and the 938. Um, they were good guns. I like the actually the 238 a little bit better. I'm kind of a wimp, um, but uh, but I've not tried the Legions, um, and I can't find them around here. We do have a, a Sig authorized dealer. They have, um, they probably have seen one or two, but um, I haven't seen any on the counter or anything like that yet. So, and it's not really on the radar to be honest with you at this point. Uh, Steven, uh, it's, uh, do you still have your Beretta PX4 Storm? No, I do not. Uh, that one is gone. That was a great gun. It was a fun gun to review, but that was not one that was designed to be long-term. Um, I, they, I've got some other guns that kind of scratch that itch, like the P01, um, that I just, I knew that that one wouldn't stay around. It was a good shooter, but, uh, but it was not a, a permanent addition to the collection. Honest, good to see you. Use a grinder. Yeah, we, we might have to. We'll have to see. We'll we'll need to swap some uh, stories about the uh, Q5 steel frame. <clears throat> uh, LZ USA, good to see you. Yes, the the P10S has an optic ready. Yeah, uh, all three of the P10s have an optic ready version. So there's one of each. So you'll get to kind of pick and choose. And they're priced right. I mean, they they really are. They're around the 500 450 uh, mark. And I think that is that's really smart. CZ has been very good about the P10, how they've priced it, and 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 if only they could get it to market a little bit sooner and at better volume. I think they'll really have a winner on their hands uh, because I, I think they're I think they're pretty cool. Uh, Kevin Roberts, yeah, I'm a it's it's Tuesday. It's not a Wednesday night chat. I just kind of wanted to do a solo thing. You're going to see this maybe a little bit more often on the channel. Wednesdays are safe though. Uh, we'll still do our usual Wednesday night deal for sure. V Borg, good to see you. Uh, Anthony is asking about, uh, the Breda elite. Uh, I'm assuming that's the, uh, uh, well, the LTT, I forget what that stands for. Um, something tactical, I'm sure. Uh, but that's the PX4, I imagine. Um, I, you know, I've not had any experience with that, but people rant and rave about that firearm. So I'm sure they are very, very good. Uh, foo, I do not still have the X5. In fact, it's kind of funny. I don't have a single SIG uh, in the collection at all right now. Um, and, and it's no, it's nothing against SIG at all. I, my focus just kind of went elsewhere. At the beginning of 2018, I focused a lot on SIG. I mean, I did all the X series and um, I, I've, I've done all the regular P320s, that sort of thing. And they're good guns. Um, I just, I've been focusing on other things. And, and I, admittedly, I like the P320 okay. I don't love that gun. Um, I, I don't love it. And ironically, it's the same thing with Walther, uh, the PPQ. I like the gun. The gun is okay. Never had a problem with it, but I never really fell in love with it. So this steel frame, <laughs> I'm not sure. We'll we'll see how this one goes. Um, it, it shot like uh, like a hoss, however, I, I will say that. Yeah, see, Ken, the, the S is definitely on my list as well.
Drew Sifer, good to see you. Good to see everybody, by the way. I know I haven't said everybody's name. I wish I could, but uh, I'll try and get to as many as possible. Uh, Jolly Roger USA, um, CZP01 Omega or CZP10C. That's tough. That's a really tough question because I love them both, and they're both CZ, and, and I, I have a, a special place in my heart for CZ. Um, uh, I'd probably go P01. Um, uh, the P01 is just, it's an incredible gun. Um, it's such a shootable ergonomic, fantastic firearm. Uh, but, uh, but the P10 is no slouch, uh, without questions, no slouch at all. Uh, let's see. Uh, Huey is saying, uh, regarding optics for pistols is co-witness necessary. Um, would that kind of discount the X carry? Very good question. Um, for me, if it was carry, yes, I think full, uh, hundred percent co-witness is really important. Um, you could even go, uh, I guess what, uh, uh three fourths co-witness, uh, where it's not quite all the way into the optic, but enough to where you can see both the front and the back optics or, or uh, sights through the optic. I think that's really important because optics, they're electronics. They have batteries. Uh, they have a, a glass screen essentially on them. So there's always the opportunity for something to break down. Your iron sights won't ever run out of batteries. Um, usually they're metal, right? Um, unless you get a Glock with a polymer sight, which most people change out anyway. So the chances of your iron sight getting damaged or something happening or the battery just running out or getting wet, whatever the case may be, is far less likely. So I'm a huge proponent if you're going to carry a, a red dot, run with some iron sights that you can co-witness through. Now, if it's a range toy, if it's uh, competition, even if it's maybe home defense where you're not up bumping against things all day long and that sort of thing, and you have more opportunity to check on it, make sure it's in good shape and in a safe place, the, the iron sights may not be quite as big of an issue. But uh, but for carry, yes, I think that's really important. Um, it's personal preference. I know some people who don't. They just run with the optic. I wouldn't. That that I just I wouldn't do that. Now I'm also a fan of iron sights. Um, I I prefer iron sights most of the time. Uh, Young guns, good to see you. Saying that uh, blue uh, P229 uh, that I feature that tight blue titanium one. That was a really nice 229. I I put the uh, the uh, short reset trigger in it, and it was a it was a great gun. Um, it's one of many guns that I wish I still had. Uh, but uh, but I, once again, it was one that was destined not to be here. Pyro, thank you very much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Uh, the TP9 SFX, it's a fantastic firearm. Um, I, you know, a lot of people uh, dig Canik or Janik, however you want to say it, uh, because of where they're made, whatever. I don't get into that whole argument. Um, and we have things lying around our house made from many other countries as well. I, you know, it's a whole thing. So I don't really bother with that. Um, I think Canik puts out good guns for the money. Um, I really do. Um, I still have that Combat Elite. I love that gun. It's a little bit more pricey, uh, but I think the features pretty much justify it. Uh, but but you get a lot of stuff out of the box, especially with the SFX. I mean, it's optics ready. You've got the different plates. Uh, you've got uh, good capacity magazines, that sort of thing. I mean, I think they are good guns. And a lot of people are running them in competition because it gives you a way into running competition for a budget or on a budget. I think that's, I think that's awesome. I think that's important. So uh, I think they make good guns. I really do. Uh, KS, uh, is this from, uh, Keith Gregory? Say hi to Kathleen. Kathleen, Keith says hello. Let's see. Uncharted trucker. Good to see you. Um, have you ever inspected a P210? I tried one at Shields and it was, uh, it was pretty disappointed. Um, the trigger was not up to par and quality seemed a little bit lacking. So, uh, Trucker, I held one one time. There was a SIG rep at Frontier Justice in Kansas City, Kansas. This was last year. It has probably been six months, five months, something like that. He had one there, and it was a display. In fact, I tried to sweet talk him into selling it to me. He would have nothing to do with that um, <laughs> and didn't care at all to talk about it. But uh, um, I liked it okay. It felt pretty good. Um, the trigger felt all right on that. However, that one probably had couple thousand rounds through it at least because um, that was one that he would demo for people so um, that's the only experience I have 
Um, I, you know, that's kind of on the long distance list for me. I'd really like to try one, but it's an expensive firearm and I don't know what the interest is for a lot of people out there and getting into a really expensive firearm. I want to make sure that there's some interest like the, like the Q5 match. Um, that's a good example. That's a, it's, it's an expensive firearm, but I think there are a lot of people who want to see it and want to know a little bit more about it, how it compares to some other firearms. And so I, I felt like it was a little bit more justifiable. Plus I wanted to try, it, you know, and, and the, the 210, I think looks looks pretty cool. And I hear they're pretty sweet shooters, but it's, it's a little bit lower on the list. So, um, I, I'm glad to hear your, uh, your take on it. That helps quite a bit. Oh, oh, <laughs> me and Jean, uh, I music lover. I'm so sorry. I haven't seen a call out from you. I'm trying to hit everybody as much as I can. Music lover. How are you? Hope you're well this evening. Um, always, always a pleasure to see you for sure. Um, I'm, I'm always slow on the uptake. Um, hurt one. Good to see you. Uh, channel cat chaser. Good to see you. Um, how did everyone get so hyped on the CZP 10 C as a Glock killer, but it's price fell through the roof and Glock still commands $500. It's interesting. It's an interesting question. Was it a Glock killer? No. Um, I, I, I think it's fair to say that it probably wasn't, but I think it gives people another option. That's a good option at a reasonable price. I mean, that's the way I would look at it. And some people prefer the ergos of the P10. You know, it's a little bit more aggressive. It's pretty flat shooter, although Glocks are as well. Um, and some people are just fans of CZ, you know, some people, um, are against Glock because of the name Glock for whatever reason. Um, I, I you know, th different strokes for different folks. Uh, but, uh, but I would say it was not a Glock killer. I mean, I, I think it probably is the same thing that it is for any other gun in that market. Um, I think anytime a firearm comes out, it could be Mossberg. It could be, it could be whatever it is. It could be Taurus, the G2C. I think people are probably turning their heads a little bit about that as well, because it's taking some market share. Uh, people have been raining and raving about it, but every time a gun comes out, manufacturers have to look at it and they have to say, okay, how's it doing? What's it doing? What's it doing better? What's it doing worse? How are people reacting to it? I mean, I, I think there's a whole thing that goes into that. And so again, was it a Glock killer? No. Will there ever be a Glock killer? Who knows? Uh, maybe. Um, and, and, and I'm not trying to say the Glock's the greatest thing. They're not. They're, they're good, reliable guns, but are they great guns? I, I, you know, I don't know. Um, I think there are definitely better guns out of the box, probably in terms of refinement um, and ergonomics, but, uh, uh, but Glock, they're a well-known brand. It's easy for stores to sell them and they sell bucket tons of them every year. Um, and for the most part, they run. Um, keep in mind, most people run a few boxes through them and then they you know, put them in a, a safe or in a drawer or something like that. And they don't put five or 10,000 rounds in a year through their firearm. And, uh, and so, you know, to the average person, when they get that experience and it works and they don't have to take it in and have uh, the gun mechanic or the, the uh, gunsmith uh, look at it or anything in their mind, it's like, okay, this was a win and it works. And so I, I think that's the formula that they rely on a lot of times. trying to catch up here. You you guys, but you guys are amazing. All these comments. Thank you, by the way, very much. Thank you. So Keenum, I'm not sure. Let's see. You're talking to young guns. I see. And you're talking about ejection is better and brass doesn't hit you in the face. So, so I've got a question for you guys, because occasionally I'll get comments about a video. I mean, periodically all the gun that has crazy, um, ejection, maybe it just kind of plops, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, cartridges out, or they kind of fling them back, maybe hit my arm or something like that. I've had a few hit me in the hat a few times. What is your criteria for that? Um, some people just freak out and they really are adamant about that gun is obviously junk because it's not chucking them 15 feet out that way or anything like that. What is your criteria for good ejection in a firearm? Um, I'd be really curious about that. For me, I'll just tell you, as long as it doesn't get stuck in the gun and cause a malfunction and it doesn't hit me in the face, I don't care. I truly don't care. I don't care if uh, shells hit me in the arm. I don't care if one goes down my shirt. I've had it happen before. A lot of us have probably. That's not that big of a deal to me. I want the gun to function first and foremost, and I don't want to get hit in the face, in the eyes or anything. Even though I wear glasses, uh, that helps a little bit. But that's that's I have pretty basic criteria for that. And, and, um, and the only time I really pay a lot more attention to ejection is usually on something like a polymer 80 because I know the tolerances are going to be all crazy. And so crazy ejection is going to tell me a little bit about what I screwed up in the build. 
<laughs> Ice Cold Killax saying the Q5 match, uh, it's going to be a safe queen. I, you know, maybe. I, who knows? Hopefully not. That'd be a that'd be a tough to justify safe queen. I you know a gun like that if it becomes a safe queen it's gone. It, that's that that can't that can't happen. Vanessa Kitty, good to see you. Uh, mean Gene is saying, is the Glock forty eight um, just for the ten round states or is it really a slim nineteen worth it? Good question. Um, and we were talking about that a little bit earlier. I don't know. Um, I really don't. Yes, I think uh, that would be a great. Uh, incentive for people that live in a round restricted state potentially, but there might be some other people that just want a slightly lighter, slightly thinner gun. Although it's not lighter by much, maybe an ounce or two. So there's not a big weight savings, but some people might just want um, I, just to, to not have quite so much yanking on them inside the waistband, something like that uh, with a wider gun. So I don't know. I really don't. Uh, I'm excited to get my hands on it though. Captain Shark, good to see you. Uh, CZ dropped the wholesale price to their distributors on the P10, and they're selling them by the container load. And a lot of the sales are first-time CZ buyers, not so dumb on CZ's part. Yeah, yeah, I would say that's true. Again, I, I think CZ, CZ did not do themselves any justice um, at the beginning of 2017. You know, we were supposed to see the P10 around SHOT Show 2017. And I know it was May before I got mine, and mine was, I think, one of the first around town. Um, and uh, and it was kind of in that first batch or two to the general public. There were some people that got them, obviously, way before somebody like me, like Military Arms Channel, that sort of thing. But uh, um, but they were they were incredibly difficult to get a hold of and to find. And you know, if you wanted to sell one, you were commanding full retail price for a little bit more for, and that is not the case anymore. So hopefully, they learn their lesson. Uh, cast from the hip, thank you very much. Really appreciate that, man. I really appreciate that a lot. That means quite a bit. Uh, very nice of you. Uh, let's see. Cajun Tigers, good to see you. Saying uh, brass nut in the face is always good. Yeah. I, I mean, I have very basic criteria for that sort of thing. I'm not one of those people that studies, and I know a lot of people do. do. They study ejection, and they want a perfect little pile back here somewhere. And, and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But I just, I, I typically don't do that. Um, uh, honest is saying, I like it to fly, uh, 20 feet because it shows me that it will handle cold and adverse conditions. That's interesting. You know, I've never really thought about that. And, and you're, you definitely get to test some firearms in some pretty crazy conditions. So that's an interesting perspective. And, and I would not have correlated the two together. So we all learn things from honest. I appreciate that. Uh, William Keller, do you like the 43X or 48 better? Um, which one, if any, has caught your interest? They both caught my. If I could, I would review every single new gun that came out to the market. I mean, my channel is geared towards reviewing guns whenever possible, especially new guns when possible. Obviously, that's not realistic. I can't do them all, but I like Glock, so I'm interested in both. I'm especially interested in the 43X. I think that is one that I'm, I'm the most curious about, um, especially the shootability. Let's see here. Keith Gregory, are you going to the game on Sunday? I'm not. I'll be really honest with you. Um, I'm not a big sports person. Um, that That's not really a thing. I mean, you guys know I was a musician for 30 years. I... In early, early days, um, I gravitated towards music. Um, I spent most of my time doing music things, playing in all the different bands, not only in school, but then uh, professionally after that for, I don't know, 20 years anyway. And um, and so that took all of my time. I, I basically was behind a drum set every moment I possibly could throughout my childhood and a good portion of my younger adult life. And so sports just... It didn't catch my interest. I mean, I, I used to swim. I, I played basketball a little bit. I was, I'm, I'm 6'2". Um, so at the time, it was reasonably okay. Now I'm pretty short for basketball. But uh, but sports just aren't really a thing. I've been to Arrowhead a couple of times. It's pretty awesome. But uh, but it's just not my, not my thing. So I am not going to the game on Sunday. By the way, it's going to be brutally cold. So I feel sorry for everyone going to that game. It's going to be nasty. Uh, we're going to start seeing weather as of tomorrow, I think. And it's going to get really bad. Uh, REB, thank you very much. Really appreciate it, man. Um, uh, let's see, got the others before. Love your stuff. Well, thanks, man. Really appreciate that. Um, you've been a great supporter. Uh, we appreciate that. Appreciate all of you, of course, every single one of you guys. <clears throat> 
uh, Range Randy Glock 19 Gen 5 is the best Glock. Now, are you talking the Gen 5 or are you talking the Gen 5 MOS? I'm curious, not to say that one's better than the other, but uh, but I'm curious to know which one you like. Um, it seems by what you wrote that it's the non-MOS version. And I like the Gen 5s too. I'll be honest with you. Um, I was a huge Gen 4 fan for a long time. Um, but uh, but Gen 5, I think they've got slightly better triggers. I really, I, I'll say it. Um, and that MOS, um, when they when they got rid of that little cutout in the front, because that really did annoy me sometimes, I, I thought they were really spot on with the Gen 5 MOS. Um, I've, I've been a big fan. I still have it. Um, and, and, and anytime something lasts six months or better in the collection, that usually means something has gone right with the gun. Um, it's, it is a good gun. And, and I think something that would replace it would probably be another Glock 19 of some sort or another. It's a requirement for me when I set out to do this channel uh, back in 2000, whatever, 16, I said, I will always have a Glock 19. That will always be there uh, to whatever degree. I don't care if it's Gen 3, 4, 5, 2, 7, 9, 9, or whatever it is. I have to have a Glock 19 because people oftentimes like to see that comparison uh, with the Glock 19. Now I do the Smith & Wesson MMP 2.0C sometimes because they're basically the same size, but the Glock 19 people seem to correlate a lot with that. So, um, and I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big fan mile high. Great to see you. And William Keller, thank you very much. Really appreciate it, man. That's very, very nice of you. It's very nice of you. Uh, channel cat. Let's see you play hot for teacher. You know, surprisingly, it's actually not a very difficult song to play. Um, just, just a little cheat there. Uh, just so you know, there's a lot less going on than what it actually sounds like a lot more with hands than with feet. You'd be surprised on that one. So, uh, but I'll tell you what, I, I retired in 2013. I couldn't play now to save my life. Um, and my my hands and feet would fall apart if I tried. Um, it was my body told me it was time to stop playing. And, and so I, I listened, thankfully. Um, NEPA gun talk. Um, is Kansas a constitutional carry state? Yes, uh, we can open carry. Uh, we can carry uh, concealed without a permit, although they still offer a permit. And I prefer the permit because it's easier to buy a firearm that way. You can get them and walk out. And you don't have to worry about the phone calls and all that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, so we are a, we are a very gun friendly state. We're in the top ten. I don't remember where we rank, but we're we're pretty pretty high up there. So got lucky here for that. Uh, Kathleen is asking, do you still own Styres? Yeah, I still have the uh, the M9 A1, um, and I love that firearm. And it's it's funny uh, you mentioned that because um, I, I saw that in the safe the other day, and I thought, you know, I need to get that back out, and I need to put it back on video and do some more comparisons. So I've been trying to think about uh, some good some good comparisons to do. I'm still a huge fan of Styre. And I, I've heard whispers they're coming out with some new stuff. Maybe you guys know, uh, but I'm hoping they do. I mean, they are great firearms and I'd like to see them come out with some new uh some new options. <laughs> Pistol Pete, 120 people in here. Yeah, you guys, thank you very much. That's really cool. Um celebrity, not no, no. I don't want to be a celebrity. I I that's that in the thing for me. I enjoy doing this and, and you guys are friends and family. It's just like talking with my friends. This is not I I it's a celebrity thing. That that in the thing for me. Um I, I would be too weird, I think. People wouldn't enjoy me being a celebrity. Uh, let's see, Kevin Roberts, hey, KS, uh, try the Sharps Extreme BCG on your next AR build. Uh, love them and easy to clean. Yeah, it's funny. So um, so I shot the AR last night at Centerfire, and um, so I, I was cleaning it before the live stream tonight. And, and keep in mind, I'm an AR noob. I've had one AR before years ago, um, and, and I did clean that one. I know how to take apart the bolt carrier group and that sort of thing. Um, uh, but I really fumbled around a little bit and I did find that that bolt carrier group that came with the Palmetto State Armory, it's got a sort of finish on it that everything sticks to it a little bit. Um, like, you know, I like to clean with t-shirts and, and, uh, synthetic patches, that sort of thing. And I found that it got pretty linty. Um, and so I've got to figure out what to do about that. Um, so if you guys have any suggestions, let me know about that. I eventually will not be a noob at that. I hope. I hope I learn some things about ARs because I sound like an idiot. Um, I told the story on the the Wednesday night chat uh, with the other boys about uh, my my video uh, number one that actually has been released. Now you guys may have noticed if you saw the video that um, the BUIS the iron sights that Dagger Defense um, sent for that build. Um, I, I called them BUIS. 
And I knew that it stands for backup iron sights, but for whatever reason, I'm not used to the lingo. And, and this is where you guys, I, I can't hide, you know, I can't hide what I know and what I don't know. And so the only thing that I could do to keep a bunch of commenters coming on and saying, oh my gosh, KS, you don't know anything, was to put a little title, a little uh, text box that says B-U-I-S, backup iron sights, that sort of thing. So people just didn't think I was a total idiot about it. Uh, but again, I can't, I can't, I can't hide that, <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, let's see, uh, Pyro. Oh, thank you very much, Pyro. Really appreciate it. What AR 15s do you own? Well, so because I just finished cleaning it, I actually do have it out. I'll sneak pe preview it one more time. It's the last time you guys get to see it until the video comes out, but that's it. Um, it's actually, it's an AR pistol. Um, and, uh, and it was a, a, a budget build. Um, and I called it an extreme budget build, by the way. And somebody called me out on that. And they said, that is not an extreme budget build. You can do ARs for like three or $400. And so to me, I thought this was a, a heck of a budget build considering you could buy a Glock for the same price, but apparently you can go a little bit lower than that. I still felt like I did pretty well, $550. I thought that was, uh, I thought that was okay. <clears throat> REB is saying first AR build was a, a 450 Bushmaster. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's an incredible price. The fact that we can get ARs, sp modern sporting rifles at such a low cost is absolutely amazing. I mean, you can go bonkers with them. You can get them for, you know, two or three thousand dollars. I'm sure all the premium parts and all that. But uh, but the idea that you can get them at handgun at, at reasonably inexpensive handgun prices, that's that is pretty darn cool. And from what I understand, companies are really trying to uh, to give them away just about uh, because there's sort of an over surplus of ARs right now. Uh, Ransom is saying PSA stuff feels gritty. You know, it probably is a little bit. It's not high end stuff. Um, and, and again, I, I don't know enough to, to know what's good and what isn't at this point, but I, I can imagine that is probably true. Uh, let's see. Ian Moniz is saying a P80 version two build stock lock parts. Uh, you know, you were talking with Ransom, so not sure what the first part of that is. Uh, Honest is saying cryptic coatings is my favorite BCG. Yeah, I need to learn more about this stuff. Nickel boron, Dexter saying nickel boron. Um, I've seen that come up uh, uh, multiple times. And uh, and so I, in my next build, I need to be a little bit more selective about the individual parts and really part it out um, as best that I can. Okay, uh, Fresh Fowler is saying a message. Yeah, I'll hit you up, man. Um, I, I need all the help I can get. There's no doubt about that. Um, Glim Tech Arms is saying the low cost will be ending soon. I hope not. Uh, you may be right, uh, but but I, you know, hopefully not. I like I love the idea that anybody can get a hold of so much of this stuff, um, and it's it's reasonable. It's not so far out of everybody's budget to uh, to be able to get in and enjoy this stuff. So I think that's really exciting. Uh, Ransom is saying, have you seen the, uh, what would stoner do build from in range? I have not seen that. I'm, I'm, I, I have not. Uh, William Keller is saying, do you think guns and ammo will dry up next year? Uh, like it was under Obama. Um, I hope not. Uh, I, you know, we're not poised for that unless they start really changing laws unless, um, you know, now that the house is, uh, uh is not with us. I, I don't know, but hopefully not. Let's see. Uh, Mike Schmidt is saying, just saw a channel called Caroline, Caroline, Caroline. Is it Caroline or Carolina? Gun guy. Uh, videos look like a direct ripoff of your stuff. Well, I, you know, nothing's copyrighted. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my, my stuff, I'll, I'll tell you, my stuff is stuff is not terrifically, um, it's not terribly exciting in terms of cinematic quality or anything like that. I mean, I basically just sit at a table. Some people say it's kind of like a hand model, you know, um, although I kind of prefer that. I think people would rather see the gun than my face under, under most circumstances. Uh, but, uh, but I mean, I'll check it out. I, I'm not familiar with uh, Carolina gun guy. Let's see. REB is saying the only reason I did it was a local gun shop was selling arrow uh, upper and lower for 88 bucks. That's, that's a heck of a deal. Uh, Neo Shazam. That's a cool name. I like that. Um, you're getting, getting it ready for a silencer are you, for a suppressor. Are you talking about the AR pistol? Um, uh, no, that one, I don't think I, I will suppress. And the only can that I have is an Omega 45. So it would not run on that. It would run on a 300 blackout, but it would not run on, uh, on the five, five, six, the pressures are too, uh, too high. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Dexter saying PSA running nickel boron free shipping for 80 bucks. Nickel boron is the, would this be the bolt carrier group? I'm assuming I may have to do that. I can't, I can't switch any parts out on this right now. Not at least until I finish the series on it, because if I start switching out parts, people, you know, people get testy about stuff like that. So I, I have to keep it, I have to keep it stock at least for the time being. Carolina. Yeah. Mike Schmidt saying Carolina. Okay. Yeah. I'll definitely check that out. Uh, Ransom is saying, I don't think it was necessarily due to Obama. It was mostly school shootings causing panic buying. I, I think that's true. You know, anytime we have shootings and it captures the media's attention and groups get behind it, it, it then it becomes a thing that, that becomes a bigger issue. Now see Kim is saying buy ammo now. Yeah. I, you know, see, I haven't heard that ammo is an issue right now and I'm hoping it doesn't uh, begin to be that. I mean, I remember 2012, I'm sure a lot of you guys do after, um, after Connecticut, uh, ammo prices soared. I mean, you used to be able to get, you know, nine millimeter for seven, eight dollars a box, and that was at a high price. Uh, but now it's, you know, 14, 15, 16, 17 dollars, whatever it happens to be. So, uh, ammo went up quite a bit 2012, 2013. I hope we don't do that again. Uh, Mika is saying PSA has an AR pistol for 269. Is it the whole pistol has everything but the strip lower? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I keep trying to get my cousin to pick it up, uh, first, first, and I would help him put it together. 269. It's, I mean, it just blows my mind. It really does. Uh, that that's absolutely incredible. And, and you guys, I mean, I, I told you guys about this and the build, uh, over the weekend. I think that's when that video came out. Uh, it was $400 and that was the entire upper plus the lower parts kit and the brace. Uh, so fine, I'll sneak peek it one more time. Uh, so it was basically everything but the lower and the magazine and then the optics. Uh, but all of this, everything put together minus the magazine uh, was uh, $545. I mean, that is st it's still just mind blowing. Um, uh, Frank Hillman is saying a next build is a 300 blackout. No, um, I, you know, I like 300 blackout, um, especially running a can 300 blackout is awesome, but I'm really kind of hoping the next build is a nine millimeter. I really, really want to do a nine millimeter AR, or I would do a standard 16 inch and maybe some sort of vintage kind of AR, uh, you know, with the handle on it and everything. I, I like that quite a bit, uh, but we'll, we'll have to kind of see how that goes. Um, let's see. Mile high did, uh, Oh yeah. Honest to answer to you. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Guys, what other questions do you have? I think we'll probably end it in about 10 minutes or so. So we've got a little bit of time left. Uh, mean Gene is saying California bill wants to limit ammo to uh, 20 rounds a month. <sighs> There's no explaining that. I mean, what do you, what do you do with that? Seriously. Um, I, I, I hope that is not the case. I hope not. That would be, that would be awful. Uh, Brett Shipman is saying I've been getting a uh, rim nine millimeter from Walmart for seven seventy nine. That is fantastic. That's a great price. I don't have any Walmarts close to me. Um, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm sort of relegated to other things. So I Centerfire usually gets my bulk ammo for me. So, so I pay, I mean, if you're curious, I pay 200 bucks for a thousand rounds. Uh, so it's about 10 bucks a box, which still it's okay. I mean, that's, that, that, that does me all right. And so generally between a thousand and 2000 rounds a month is what I shoot. Um, so, and there, there are some that are significantly higher volumes than that. Um, I don't, I don't think I have the hand energy to be able to do that many rounds, but, uh, but that's about what I stick to. Um, no, I am not going to shot show. Um, Crackajacka, Crackajacka, 15. I like that. Uh, I'm not going to shot show this year. Um, I will go next year for sure. And I'm going to try and go to NRA this year. It just, I, it couldn't work it out. And, and I, you know, I'm still kind of learning the ropes with some of this stuff. So it's one, one baby steps, one, one thing at a time. You know what I mean? Uh, Romans is saying, uh, which do you like better HKP 30 or CZ PO seven? Uh, it's a good question. I've actually done that, uh, before. Did I do that? If I could only have one, I recorded it. I don't know if I ever released that one or not. I'd probably go PO seven. I like the trigger like 1% better than the P30. And the only reason I say that is both of them have, uh, they, they have long resets. 
So there's quite a bit of distance to get back to your wall. That drives me nuts on any gun. I like a really short reset. Uh, that it be, you know, the longer the distance there is to pull before you get to that wall, the more your gun's going to go a little bit crazier. At least that's the way. I mean, you guys know I don't have the steadiest hands. I mean, I just don't. 30 years of drumming kind of beat me up a little bit. Uh, but uh, but I, the P07, just for whatever reason, I, I tend to like it a little bit better. I actually dry fired a P30L uh, at center fire. They've got a used one or at least did. I don't know if it's still there or not. but. Uh, I thought about doing it. Honest Outlaws done one, and I, I was kind of jealous of that video. Um, I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it, and it was a good price. It was a used gun, but uh, but I just couldn't do it. So the P07, I, I probably would gravitate, but it's it's minute. I mean, it's just just barely different. Uh, let's see. Ian is asking how many locking block issues have you had, have you had with uh, PD builds? Um, so uh, two, I've had two. So I've done six builds. I've done six builds and uh, three of them have been pretty much pretty close to flawless, not flawless, but pretty close, close enough to where they were able to fit and they were able to run without doing a whole lot of extra work. Two of them uh, gave me fits. One of them was an utter disaster. Um, and, and I had to basically completely re-sculpt the locking block, that front uh, set of rails uh, that come with the P80 kit. Um, and so um, I had to take, and I do have a tips and tricks video coming up soon. I'm not sure when it's going to come out yet, but I need to do that. And I'll explain a little bit more about this. But basically, I'll take those grinding stones, those blocks, so you can get them on Amazon for 20 bucks. You can get them at like Home Depot, that sort of thing. And they're diamond blocks um, and, and you can re-sculpt your, uh, your rails. You have to be careful. It's kind of low and slow uh, in doing that because you don't want to take off too material, but, but you can kind of re-sculpt them to where I had one uh, where the slide basically would just dive down into the back of the frame. It wouldn't get to the back rails. Um, and so I, I had to re-sculpt that, that front rail set enough to where I could get the slide on the rails. Gun runs fine now, but, uh, but it, it took a lot of time and, uh, if, you know, a couple phone calls to P80, they were nice. I mean, they were reasonably helpful. They wanted to send out new rails. Uh, but, but at the end of the day, I me, mean, I just kept working with it and it finally worked. And so it, it works okay now. All right, we have time for maybe a couple more questions if you guys have anything else. And if you've asked one and if I've missed it, ask it again, please. <clears throat> uh, Brett Shipman is asking, uh, the, Rome, uh, the new Romeo one uh, is made to fit the uh, M17 P3, P320. No, I don't think so. I think that's actually cut for um, the Leopold, the Delta Pro, whatever it is. Um, I think that's what it's uh, cut for. So I don't think the Romeo will work. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, um, which I may be. Uh, Corey's asking P10C update, barrel, RMR cut. Um, you know, it's funny. I don't have a P10C right now. I, I knew that the new ones were coming out, so I got rid of the old one. Um, and so I'm just waiting for the new set. I'd like to do all three if I can, but the S and the F are the priorities, uh, because I've done the C and, and if I, if I can't do all three and financially, I, I, I may not be able to, but, uh, but at least the S and the F, um, and, and I, I, if they have the optics ready ones available at the time, that's great. If they don't, I'll go without. That's not that big of a deal to me one way or the other. They've done it a little bit different. Uh, they, they've got the optics cut, and then I think you can get the plates after the fact for them. It doesn't come with a set of plates like some firearms, like the like the Q5 Match um, and some of the other firearms out there. So I'm surprised they didn't do that, but perhaps that helps keep the cost down a little bit. Um, and usually people have one optic that they run with. So um, we'll see. Uh, Pyro, thanks again. Man, you've, you've been awesome. I really appreciate that very much. Um, the NRA show, yeah, if I'm there, man, just you know, come find me. Let's, let's chat for sure. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to be there. I'm hoping it's in Texas this year. I'm hoping. And then, uh, you know, Big Johnson, I'm sure will go, uh, maybe Harry from Harry's holsters will go. I know those guys kind of piled around last year. So I'm hoping to join the party with those two goofballs. So we'll see what happens. 
Uh, Dexter, uh, MMP 2.0 Magwell, is that going to happen? Uh, you know, I don't know if I can find one. I, I know they make a couple, uh, but it hasn't been a priority on the MMP 2.0 as much as it has on the Glocks and some of that sort of thing. But maybe, um, you know, if I can get a hold of uh, the right company and, and, you know, work out a deal of some sort or another, we'll see what happens. Uncharted Trucker, I usually like shooting a more unusual gun. What has been your most unusual, unique gun? Oh, man. That's that's a stumper, my friend. Um, one that comes to mind would be the TSO. Um, I, I mean, and I still have it. Um, it's it's an incredible firearm, but probably um, certainly one of the most expensive guns I've shot, aside from that Nighthawk Custom that nobody has ever watched that video. Um, whatever, uh, it's it's old. You don't have to watch it. Uh, but uh, but the TSO I think is one of the more unusual firearms, and it is it is quite spectacular. Uh, but I'd have to think about that a little bit more. I'm sure there are some other ones that were pretty unusual. Uh, Harry's saying NRA is in Indy this year. Okay, well, we could do Indiana. Are you going to, are you going to hit me up later? We'll talk. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I could definitely do Indiana. That shouldn't be too big of a deal at all. Uh, Pistol Pete, well, what's it like to own your own shooting range? I wish I knew, brother. I wish I knew. Wouldn't that be nice? I wouldn't, I wouldn't sit behind a desk at a, at a corporate job all day. Let's put it that way. All right, we have time for maybe one more question if anybody has anything else. Once again, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out tonight. This has been a lot of fun. You guys enjoy this. You guys want to do this a little bit more often. I mean, I was kind of thinking once or twice a month, perhaps. Um, I don't want. I, I don't think I want to do it weekly. Um, that that might be a little bit overkill, uh, but, uh, but maybe a couple times a month, perhaps. Yeah, Corey, Honest definitely knows about uh, the home range for sure. I, I'll tell you what, I'd go, I'd be broke in a in a nanosecond if I had that range. I would be out there shooting constantly. My neighbors would hate me. Uh, Mossberg nine millimeter versus Taurus. So NC, that's a good idea. Um, that might make for a really good video. I st that G2C, I really like it quite a bit. Um, and I still have it. Um, in fact, I almost got it out tonight to kind of play around with, but, uh, anyway, uh, Fina, what ammo do you shoot? Whatever's cheap. Um, I, you know, by and large, I, I usually get bulk PNC. I like that ammo. It's usually run really well for me. Um, and it's, uh, it's not terrifically snappy, although nine millimeter isn't generally, but when you shoot weird, a variety of different guns, it's nice, nice to have a little bit of consistency there. So uh, I generally do that when I can. So uh, still like the G two C and not like the TH nine C AB, I, you know, I'm on the fence on that TH nine C it's not a bad gun. It is really not a bad gun. And at the end of the day, it ran, uh, but, uh, but we'll see, uh, seven wonders, uh, wouldn't be sad if you did it weekly. I don't know that I could do it weekly. Um, but we'll, we'll have to kind of see, I, and some of it has to do with the mood. Um, and, and the mood has to strike a little bit. So we'll have to see uh, what happens. So, um, anyways, you guys, um, let's wrap this up. This has been a ton of fun. It's been a long time since I've done a solo chat, but it is always fun to just talk with you guys about whatever you want to talk about. Um, I have a really good time with it. Hopefully you do too. Um, so I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and, uh, and, and giving some time to me really appreciate that. Um, so it's good to have the, the friends and family around for sure. So guys, uh, thanks again. And, uh, we will see you hopefully tomorrow night with, uh, big Johnson and 17 and, uh, we'll go from there. So guys have a great night. Uh, be safe, shoot straight, all that kind of good stuff. And, uh, we'll see you next time.